Hi guys, I'm just going to do a wee video today uh, previewing um, the Six Nations clash next weekend between Scotland and France in Paris and how I think it's going to go. This is obviously a must-win game for both sides. Um, France, because they do not want to be getting into a wooden spoon shootout with Italy in the last day and considering how crappy their Six Nations has gone so far and how much unrest there is in the squad, they'll be looking to get some confidence by winning this game and Scotland uh, need to win it to obviously maintain our competitive edge in terms of um, how the Six Nations title race will go out if we're wanting to be competing, that is. By the looks of things, um, the news has come out the past couple of weeks since uh, France lost to England 44-8 that France squad looks in turmoil, uh, looking in a really bad place with the likes of Morgan Parra and Camille Lopez coming out in public in the press to say, uh, criticising their coach Jack Brunel and the coaching team uh, for how they've coached them so far, the Six Nations. So it'll be interesting to see how France respond to that, um, which with France there's potential like in the 2011 World Cup where the players get together and uh, do it for themselves and in the World Cup they obviously got to the final when they did that. But in this instance I'm not so sure, mainly because of this current crop of French players that is... Um, available to them and who they have. I don't know if they're good enough. I really don't. I think it's been clear so far against against Wales. They did well in the first half, but the second half, um, I think like clumsiness and fatigue did play a factor, um, especially with their big forwards up front. And against England, they were obviously blown away. England just tactically outthought them. They outbattled them, um, outplayed them everywhere, and France just couldn't stand up to it and didn't have the intelligence to stand up to it, which I could think you know, could play into Scotland's hands, possibly, um, on Saturday. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the teams, who I think the teams are going to be, um, or in France's case, who I think the team's going to be for France, and what team I would pick for Scotland, being Scottish, of course. Yeah, with France, um, I think they will go with this team, um, just coming up on your screen now. Uh, Backline, I think uh, Thomas Ramos's form for Toulouse has merited him uh, the fullback jersey and he did okay when he came on against England, so I think he'll be uh, the fullback. I think Damien Pinot, if fit, will keep his place. Um, I think Anton Dupont, who is the uh, biggest you know, player who made an impact against England, made an impression and he's been doing really well for Toulouse this season as well. So I think he will get the nine shirt over Morgan Parra. Morgan Parra, I'm not sure, will even be in the 23 considering this form and after what he said in the press. I think Matteo Bastereau will still be at centre and Wesley Fofana, who's back fit now, will be his partner. And I think they will go for a bit of a powerful centre because... With Scotland, to be honest with you, he, um, who, no matter who plays, we don't have the most powerful centres out there. So I think they'll look to get Bastardo bashing up the middle. Um, it'll be a case of how we uh, get parity on that. Um, I don't think we'll have too much problems if we are smart enough and we take Bastardo down by the legs and get two men on him uh, for most of the time. I think we'll be okay. In the forwards, I think France, they'll go with a similar pack to what they picked against Wales. I think the only... Difference will be in the second row. I think Felix Lamboy uh, did pretty well against England. I think he he's done enough to keep his place. So I think that will be the only uh, difference from the team that started against Wales in the opening game. Um, outside of that, like I said, I expect it to be pretty much the same on the bench. Uh, this, I think, to my knowledge, uh, with the props, they've got that Danny Preso out injured just now. That's what I've... Um, been informed, so I think they'll make a change in the loose head prop replacements. I think um, Fabian Sa Sanconi uh, will come onto the bench of the back row replacement. Uh, we've not really seen him yet. He's been playing quite well for a race in Metro this season. Uh, Baptiste Serran, again, I think will um, see off Morgan Parra for the bench number, uh, the bench scrum half slot, pardon me. Uh, because, like I said, Para, I just uh, think his words are going to cost him. I think they'll stick, keep Entomac on the bench and he'll come off and try and make a difference. And Maxi Medar's back fit, so I think they'll go for him on the bench over Gail Fiku. I think Fiku's yellow card against England and his performance in general might have cost him in that game. So, that is my um, team I think will play for France. I'm going to go on to talk about Scotland now. I think in this game... We're going to have to be super 
accurate and also super smart and super fast. I think we can beat this French team if we wear them down, but so long as we don't make stupid basic mistakes, which we can sometimes get into habit of doing, and that when we're in contact, we're not making offloads when they're not needed, um, but we're trying to also at the same time play a fast game, but also with some brains as well as to when to play pass. Make sure we get parity up front. I think that's my biggest worry is the huge French pack. But if we can, you know, get parity on that and keep it stable, I think we should be okay. I think we're definitely fitter than France. I think we're more uh, collectively together as a team. The French team so far, the Six Nations just look like a bunch of individuals. They don't look like a collective unit at all, really, especially against England. They weren't. Um, but I th So I think we're definitely better there. But of course we have our own injuries. Hugh Jones is definitely out for the rest of the Six Nations, which is a big blow. And Stuart Hogg most likely expected to be as well. I think with Stuart Hogg's um, replacement, I think it's pretty obvious Blair Kinghorn will just slot straight into fullback. Um, so I don't see a big issue there as long as Kinghorn remembers he's playing fullback for the full 80 minutes and not out on the left wing like he did at the start against Ireland. But I think um, that will be fine. I think Kinghorn um, will have a good game if he gets ball in hand. He's very dangerous. I don't think on Hogg's level, but he's still very dangerous. And defensively, he's improved a lot in the last year. At 13, this is a difficult one. Um, we've, there's been a lot of discussion about this from Scotland fans as to who will get the 13 shirt. A few name With the injuries we have, a few names have been thrown into the ring. Uh, Chris Harris, obviously. <clears throat> Pardon me. Who is the expected choice? Um, Nick Gregg uh, of Nick Gregg of Glasgow. Pardon me, and James Johnson of Edinburgh. Now, for me, I would actually pick James Johnston at thirteen, mainly because um, he's been playing very well for Edinburgh this season. He had a very good game on Friday night for Edinburgh against the Dragons. Scored two tries. He's a better defender than Hugh Jones, um, so I think he would. Be a good choice, but again, there's a lack of experience there because Sam Johnson at 12, he doesn't deserve to be dropped at all. He's only got two caps, and then Johnston just coming in as a as a completely new cap. Um, so the lack of experience there, um, but hopefully that wouldn't be a factor if that's the case. But uh, again, I do think it'll be Chris Harris who gets the 13 shirt because Gregor Townsend seems to like him, and um, he did pretty well, to be fair, when he came on against uh, Italy, scored a try, but I, I'm not convinced that Chris Harris is our answer at thir 13 if Hugh Jones gets injured, but I would go for James Johnston, because um, I think uh, he, he's done enough to um, warrant being given a chance, so I would go for James Johnston at 13. And on the wing, just for experience, because with Hoggy and Hugh Jones out, I would stick with Tommy Seymour at 14. I've had debates and had thoughts about whether he should be dropped, which I said in previous videos, but I think for experience, we do need to start him, um, but he needs to step up and do a lot better because I still think he's um, got some work work to do and he hasn't really been um, the Tommy Seymour we know is a good winger since uh, the Lions to our bar a couple of games here and there. That that's my thoughts on that. In the pack, I've gone for a whole Edinburgh front five. Um, actually, a whole Edinburgh pack apart from Josh Strauss at eight. And um, and I think I'm not sure if WP Nell's going to be fit or not. Um, I've not had seen much sources to say that he will or won't be. He missed the Ireland game, of course. But if he's fit, I would pick him. If not, I would um stick with Simon Bergen at three. He didn't do that much wrong against Ireland and doesn't. Uh, really warrant being dropped from the 23 at all but again if if Nell's fit I think pick him at uh, tight head prop because he's our best tight head prop we have and in the scrums I think he could be very effective against the huge French pack in the second row and um, I've gone for like I said the whole whole Edinburgh second row because I think Gilchrist and Toulis uh, have done very well this season and were at their spot and weren't their spot whereas Johnny Gray I don't think has been at his best and um, so I don't see the harm in drop, dropping Johnny Gray to the bench and uh, going for Toulouse and Gilchrist in the second row and maybe bring Johnny Gray on late, later on uh, for uh, the tackles and uh, to get get in front, get on top of a huge French pack at the breakdown as well. But that's my thought. Um, and the, in the back row, Magnus Bradbury uh, put a great shift in on his comeback for Edinburgh against the Dragons on Friday night, was man of the match. So I would, with the injuries we've had, obviously with Ryan Wilson injured, uh, John Barkley, Hamish Watson, 
uh, still injured. I thought he was maybe going to be back for the France game, but he's he's not going to be. He's not fit enough yet. But with Magnus Bradbury's performance uh, for Ember against the Dragons, I see no reason why we shouldn't just slot him in at number six. I think he deserves to come back, and I think he's one for the future for Scottish rugby. He's very talented back row forward, and I would love to see him uh, more in action for Scotland, and hopefully he can stay fit as well. So that would be who I'd go for. On the bench... Um, again, depending if uh, Nell is fit, I would put Simon Bergen on the bench. But if Nell's not fit, I'd start Bergen and put Xander Fagerson on the bench. Xander Fagerson has been out for a while, but he did play for Glasgow against Cardiff this weekend. Uh, he did okay, um, and I would, yeah, I thought I'd give him a go. Give him a go. See, uh, on the bench, and um, maybe bring him on a bit later because don't want him to go down injured. Again, because he's uh, struggled with injuries the past couple of years, Xander Fagerson. So, uh, yeah, that's what that's who I'd, I'd go for. But again, if Nell's fit, put, just put Bergen on the bench. That's what I, I'd say. And again, I'd go for uh, George Horn, Horn over Ali Price. I keep saying this. I think George Horn's a far better impact player off the bench. Um, if you just look at the game against Wales last season in the autumn, in the autumn internationals, not last season, in the autumn internationals, pardon me, if you look at that and see the impact he made off the bench over Ali Price, I thought he was much better. Um, I think for Glasgow as well, coming off the bench, he's brought a lot of impact uh, to games he's played in. So um, that's why I go for him. And Price, I don't think, has really had a good game for Scotland in a while. So that's why I go for George Horn. I think he could inject some energy. Um, he gets around the park very well. But again, I'm expecting uh, Gregor Townsend to go for um, Ali Price again. And on uh, outside backs, I'd love to see Darcy Graham given a go. Um, I think putting him in at the start is a little bit too much considering the injuries we have. We need to have as much experience on the park as possible. But I'd go for um, Darcy Graham on the bench um, to bring some impact again. He's a very quick, nifty player. And I think he's got a bright future for Scotland. So I'd give him a go. But... Um, Give, judging by Gregor Townsend's interviews in the past week or so, I think he is going to go with Byron McGuigan as the outside back, even though he didn't have uh, the best game for sale against Northampton this weekend. But that's my thoughts. Um, my predictions for this game, I think Scotland are going to win. I think we're going to win by uh, whew, about three to seven points. I think we will get the win. I'm not sure about the bonus points because we haven't won in Paris for 20 years. I think it will be uh, harder. I think France will try and will give us a hard time for about 50, 60 minutes. But if we're smart enough and we're fit enough, we should pull away in the end. So, yeah, I'm expecting about three to seven, seven points. I think we'll win it. And we need to win it because we need to make sure that we're getting back into this Six Nations. And we need to make sure we're making progress on the whole going into the World Cup and... To me, the biggest way you do that is by winning games um, at this stage. Because last two Six Nations, we've won uh, three games out of five. And I think we need to be at least at that level again. Uh, we need to make sure we win at least three games the Six Nations uh, to keep us pushing forward, I think. And to make us a competitive nation in the Six Nations. Those are my thoughts. I uh, hope you liked what I had to say. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Take care, guys. And I will catch you later on.